Welcome back to TCM. I'm Dave Carger. Up next, our afternoon of movie remakes continues with the 1940 version of the romantic drama we just saw, One Way Passage. This time, George Brent and Merle Oberon co-star in Till We Meet Again. Like our last picture, this remake tells the story of a shipboard love affair between two ill-fated passengers. Brent plays a criminal facing a death sentence, and Oberon is a wealthy woman who's secretly suffering from a terminal heart condition. In the 1930s and 40s, George Brent was a popular leading man who starred opposite many of Hollywood's top actresses, but he didn't often get the chance to play characters that let him shine on screen the way his powerful leading ladies did. This 1940 drama was an exception that gave Brent one of his best roles and effectively matched him as a true co-star opposite Merle Oberon. Both Oberon and Brent were fresh from a very successful year in 1939, which had included performances in classics like Wuthering Heights and Dark Victory. Those two films also featured Geraldine Fitzgerald, who joined Brent and Oberon once again in the supporting cast of this romantic drama. The cast also includes character actor Frank McHugh, who reprised the role of the crooked sidekick that he'd originated in One Way Passage alongside William Powell and Kay Francis. Like the original, this remake earned strong reviews, and critics warned audiences that the film would manipulate their emotions, just as One Way Passage had done eight years earlier. From 1940, also with Pat O'Brien, Till We Meet Again. Kay Francis originated the role of the beautiful dying woman in the 1932 production, One Way Passage, and in this remake, the part was initially intended for Marlena Dietrich, but Dietrich backed out of the project before production began, and the role went instead to Merle Oberon, who had just given an acclaimed performance starring in director William Wyler's 1939 adaptation of Wuthering Heights. Oberon's movie career began in England in the early 1930s, where she was discovered and mentored by producer Alexander Korda, who later became her husband. Korda started casting Oberon in his pictures in 1932 and gave Oberon her first big break when he cast her as Anne Boleyn in the 1933 classic The Private Life of Henry VIII. Two years later, after making a handful of British films, she headed to Hollywood and quickly earned her first and only Oscar nomination for her performance in the 1935 drama, The Dark Angel. Up next, our afternoon of movie remakes continues with a 1931 epic western and best picture winner starring Richard Dix and Irene Dunn.